woke up in a field and I couldn't remember anything. I was lucky to find my way back to town. I asked an old woman for help. She just said nothing to me. I found my home. My mother was there, but she slammed the door in my face before I could even say anything. I found my father and my brother, but they wouldn't speak to me no matter how much I begged them to. I found the priest, and he wouldn't answer me either. I spent hours trying to get the townspeople to communicate, to say anything to me. I even tried talking to a child, but his mother hid him away from me. Eventually, I found William, though. He spoke to me, and I wept with joy when I found him. What did I do? Why am I being shunned? I asked. I don't know, he said. They shunned me as well. Go west to the outskirts of town. There's a place there called the shelter, and it's safe. I can't go with you, for there's someone there I don't trust. And then he just ran off. I found the shelter. There were people there huddled around a fire when I first arrived. I told them that I couldn't remember who I was. We can't remember either, they said. No one can. These people were outcasts just like me. They had befallen to the curse of this town. They had no answers for me, but they were a kind people. They gave me food and a place to rest. That night, I dreamt of a river. There was a woman buried deep underground. She was screaming at me, but I couldn't make out the words. I befriended a boy named Thomas. He looked familiar, so we both agreed we must have known each other before the memories had went away. Perhaps we were neighbors. He told me that even speaking of the forest was forbidden at the shelter. If you go into those woods, you'll start having visions of the future, he told me. I befriended a girl named Lydia as well. She was the doctor there, and I had to visit her pretty frequently for an infected cut I had found on my stomach. She cared for Abigail, the insane girl. Then one day, I found a strange object behind a bush. It was making this sound I'd never heard before. Abigail didn't like it. That's not a phone, she'd scream. That's not a phone. A group of men silenced her, but she was usually silent anyways. One day, a young prophet in the shelter came and preached to us. He called himself the Redeemer and had this warm glow in his eyes. We can get them to forgive us and let us back into the light, he said. Even Paul, the murderer of saints, was let into heaven. What could have we done that was so wrong? He would speak to us every Sunday to keep our hopes strong. There was always something off about him, though. One day I asked Thomas, Do you trust him? I trust in God, he said. I spent a few months at the shelter. There were broken people there. Mere half of them could even remember their names. I became close to Lydia and Thomas, though. I also found books there, but some of them were only for the Redeemer. He had a private room that he'd spend days in talking to God. You could try and put your ear up to the door and listen to what he was saying. I watched the forest with a broken telescope I'd found and wait for others to come out. One day I saw the Redeemer in the woods, though. He and his men were building a tower. I showed Lydia. What are they planning out there? I asked. She told me to never speak to anyone about this. She also took away my telescope. That night, I could hear the woman in my dreams more clearly. She was saying, praise Jesus, over and over again. Without my telescope, I couldn't see the tower behind all of the trees. So, 
I decided to portray the rules of the shelter and I ventured out into the woods. I got lost. I thought I could hear the Redeemer and his men nearby, but I never saw them. I heard a lot of things in that forest. Then, I found something unholy. There was a mass of dead infant bodies being burned. The Redeemer and his men had killed them and left them there to turn to ash. I cried and I ran back. I found Thomas chopping wood in the morning. I saw them killing babies in the fields, I told him. I explained everything that happened and he seemed just as concerned as I was. But then he said, Mary, if you go out into those woods, you'll see anything you want to see. It wasn't real. I knew I couldn't turn to Lydia and that the Redeemer and his men were not to be trusted. I was desperate. I turned to the only person I thought would be honest with me, the crazy one, Abigail Hobbs. One day I found her staring at some flowers. I told her what happened and asked for answers, answers to who I was, why all this was happening, why my family would leave me. It's in the pollen. There is something in the pollen, she said. And I somehow knew she was telling the truth. I could feel it. It's making everyone crazy, I realized. I decided to go into Salem. I found the headmaster and his council trying to appease the townspeople. They were very scared. Wells were turning up black water. Crops were dying and people were becoming sicker by the day. There was a blood moon three nights in a row, one said. I told them that it was the pollen causing all this madness. It was the pollen that took away my memories too. But they didn't listen. The headmaster warned them, don't speak to her, she is a shun one. The crowd became a mob and one woman said, it's her, she's cursed this town. A dog bit me and they took it as a sign to run me out of Salem. I was lucky to escape alive for they wanted to throw me into the river. The next day, the Redeemer made an announcement. It was time to give up on the townspeople. There was no forgiveness for them. They were the true sinners. God was testing us, his true subjects, so we had to detach ourselves from them. Forsake your leader and you forsake God, he said. We are the new Salem. Then he made a bird out of nothing and it flew off into the sky. I knew he was right. Lydia asked me if I went into town. Yes, and the forest as well, I said. She scolded me for acting foolishly. She told me I could have died. She gave me a stern look when she saw the false hope in my eyes the ignorance that was left. You believe in his miracles? He's a fraud. Trust in your gut, sister. And then she walked off. The Redeemer came to me that night. He told me that he was worried about me, but he had a way he could fix my doubt. I don't think you trust me. Would you like to see your past, he said. I agreed. He took me to his private room and had me lay down. He sat in a chair and said soothing things for a few minutes. He calmed my nerves and then a vision began to materialize. I saw myself with a child. There was a river and I put him in the water. I kept him under there until he went to sleep and then he drifted downstream peacefully.
I woke up terrified. I asked him what he did to me. Why would I see that? He told me that only I know what I saw and that it was the sin I had committed to become shunned. I left him. I went to the forest, but he told me, you can't escape what you did by running out there. You will just run back here. I ran anyways. I ran until my whole body hurt. I looked back after what felt like an hour and saw smoke coming from the shelter. It had been burned by the townspeople. They had killed him. After that, I ran until my legs gave out. Time felt disfigured until my vision went black and I fell asleep in an old field. Maybe it was the same one I woke up in. Only God knows.